it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater. And it's Shelby. And today we're going to talk about how we managed to maintain over 300 plus aquariums, almost 400. But of course, we're adding to it. Eventually, it'll be up to 500. So how do we plan on taking care of all of it, making sure that it's all high enough clean throughout the house and tanks look good enough that My we can still is that what you're trying to say yeah okay uh all right restart it's, it's alive but i can't do it every time all right so anyways it just it takes a lot of work to keep these tanks looking as good as they do all the time so what's the routine what do we do every day when we start up and wake up start our day is it diving into aquariums how exactly is it well, we're going to share that all with you, as well as, you know, the in, the out, the good, the bad, the ugly. So, all right. You got the notes? Nope. We didn't make any. Uh, no, this week was your your turn <laughs> to take the notes because it's actually... All right, so the you secret is, <laughs> and most of you are probably like, oh, it's no secret. Shelby does everything. That is the key. That is just the fix. So I was like, oh, you'll just write the notes on what you do every week. No, you don't have that. All right. No. Well, started off. I, I basically have the house broken into uh, ten different sections in the house. Right now, uh, Jaden's room is not um, doesn't have any tanks except for the axolotl and one of his little tiny skate tanks. So those are awfully easy to take care of, um, and I don't really consider them part of rota rotation. Is Anytime I'm in that side of the house and I'm doing water changes with tap water, I just take care of those two tanks. However, eventually there will be uh, tanks in there, so I'm counting that as a section for now. But throughout the house, we've got tanks in our bedroom, tanks in our uh, one, both kids' rooms, basically, is what I'm considering. Uh, tanks in the hallway, tanks in the kitchen. And then there's two mega racks in the middle of our, our living room. And then there's the rack by the front door. So I consider each one of those basically a section. And we do water changes so that way all of the tanks get done every other week. And I do basically a section every single day except for the massive stands. Uh, I basically have to break those up into two or three days. Um, so that way they all get done properly, but every other week we do about 40 to 50% water changes. I basically drain them down as far as I can without exposing the sponge, uh, not perfect human. So sometimes I drain them down further than that, uh, further than the sponge itself, but, uh, like all I, of the water. <laughs> I try to jump on those tanks and get them going. Of course, we fill them up as fast as we possibly can without, you know, disrupting the substrate. Um, Shelby's got a bad allergy issue. <laughs> so she can't bad. take Benadryl because she'll pass out. Um, I've got my mom coming. She hasn't seen the house in like six years. So imagine coming home to all of this. It's definitely going to be a, a shock for her. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that all the dust and everything is is gone and taken care of. Also, you know the she's, mothers. <laughs> she's left behind a bunch of things, and I just want to go through all that. So we've got all that ready for her to be like, hey, ship this, or I'm going to pack it and take this back. But basically, all dusty situations. And she's not going to be like, an, oh, look how cool this fish is, or this shrimp, or planted tank, or anything like that. She's going to be like, does it feel like a home? Look at all the dust. So like dusting the lids and, and making sure that the house looks good. She's watching tonight. Uh, well, we've been doing a lot of work because of you, Mom. <laughs> work that we probably would have already been doing because we've got Eric Bodrick coming to town, him and his wife, Regina. Um, but again, like they might actually be impressed with all the tanks and like some of the fish that we have. But I, my mom's going to be looking at vents clean in the vents so shelby's a little al allegitated i don't know how to say it i try to mix a word together itchy. it didn't work my yeah. eyes are very itchy and my throat is very itchy so sorry if i'm itching 
But okay. while she's been doing that, I've been doing water changes. We did half the rack. So, and we've also got all the orders going up today. Nathan said, other than when you go to shows, do you get any days off or do y'all work 24-7, 365 days? We get Christmas off. I try to do <laughs> something every single day. Even on Christmas, we still like feed and, and do stuff. So it's technically working. Um, but Shelby d did get a day off last week. I took her to Olive Garden and then she just I slept. <laughs> slept the whole day and didn't do anything. Maybe it was that the, the week beforehand, but she's she's had a day off. <laughs> it's very rare. Um, usually when you own your own business, it's going to happen, um, especially when you go to a, a certain extreme and then you don't want to pay for someone else to be working. I mean, if we hired someone else, we could probably get a day off here or there, but it's much better and just practical for us to be working every day, um, whether it's just a little small thing here. We and. Some sometimes it feels like a day off when you just do something for like a couple hours and then you're like, all right, let's go have fun. So it's not bad. I'm young and I'm already falling apart. So I want to get everything <laughs> no. done while I can and get it to a point where it's like, all right, I can automatize this and retire and just live the dream. But yeah, uh, uh, more room for takes. So you yeah, hit the. So nail on the head there head on the another head. thing that shelby's been done and why she's kind of dusty i was gonna get into that <laughs> don't ask me I'm not dusty it's in the system you're you're dusty okay i'm only wheezing a little bit so shelby hates <laughs> the dresser drawer system that we had in the bedroom the, uh, the best part of it is for her was mm -hmm. at one time it held all of her isopods so she liked them. Fish fam Christmas. There you go. Anyone watching? That was my video. We did it. We already talked about it okay. on the live stream. So you're you're adding on. Okay. But um, she just wanted to get rid of them. She also hates our walk-in closet in the master bedroom, and just the way is all arranged. <laughs> There's a whole shoe rack system, and she doesn't have the shoes that my mother had when they had the house. So. Like three pairs. More work because of you, Mom. She had to get rid of all the shoe rack system and everything like that. <laughs> Made room in the closet to put the dresser in the closet. And we got rid of all, like, our winter clothes and stuff like that we, that we don't use. Uh, the Christmas clothes, Halloween. We put those all in a drawer. Not a drawer. A bin. A bin. And put them under the bed. So we got rid of a, basically a whole dresser. It was well, between the You're two dressers. We out. could. We can put them together and make one really nice dresser rather than having to buy a new one. So there is a whole wall in the bedroom now that we could build a stand for probably 40 more 10 gallon tanks just in the bedroom alone. Um, and But before we do that, we got to get Jaden's bedroom done first. Jeff says, sounds like it might be time for Arizona for Shelby. I would die in Arizona. I think it's, it's just as dusty in Arizona. <laughs> it's huge. I think the problem not is humid, it's dry. she's allergic to her dogs, so the dog dust is what's getting her. Okay, continue with our topic, though. I think All we right. got off a little way off the beat. So we do 50% <laughs> water changes on average every other week. Uh, our system is we've got a hose. The hose has a stainless steel mesh guard that goes on the end of it. It prevents all the little baby shrimplets and all of that from getting sucked up into uh, the siphon. Uh, the hose is extremely long. It's like 150 foot or something like that. Uh, you cut it. Do you remember how long the hose is for the house? Uh, the first original one is exactly 50 feet. We sell them in 50 foot uh, boxes. I got the whole box. So Brand just new. 50 feet, not 150 mm -hmm. feet? Oh, wait. The, the Which one are you talking about? We have like three different hoses. Uh, the, the longest one that we use for the house. Oh, 75 feet. All right. so 75 it's, feet. It's 75 foot. I think the one outside's 150 feet, the thinner one that we use. The longest one is inside the house. I, oh, I don't know. Gracious. There, it's long. <laughs> it's long enough that it can go from the top tank in Jaden's room, which is the furthest point away from the swimming pool, and it goes all the way and empties out into our swimming pool. So that way, uh, our koi and turtle pond, uh, which is our swimming pool, uh, if you don't know, 
it gets a good circulation of fresh water. It's not exactly the cleanest, but the shrimp are low bio loads. I'm basically replacing the water to keep fresh minerals. It's killing me. These allergies really bother me tonight. It's bothering you? Yeah, I'm you're distracting me. So uh, we never really have to do water changes on the uh, koi pond outside. I just basically empty the water and it keeps the koi pond relatively clean and then the grow beds and stuff like that the whole filtration for that so uh, we also have all the ponds outside i try to fit those in when i can i'll double up on those doing those outside uh, we do have a relatively mild winter in florida so it's been too cold out in the ponds to do any work uh, so they haven't been done for a while not gonna lie but they're huge uh, amounts of water volume and there's not a there's not a huge load of shrimp oh, i'm dying on the words tonight yeah it's just i don't need to worry about it too too much outside they can handle themselves for the most part and then with uh the summer rolling in we start to feed more often i'll do the water changes every other week outside also it being like nice and warm outside before the sun's up I'll go outside and spend a good two, three hours in the summertime, but I definitely make up for it because I don't do anything in the uh, wintertime. You got another question? Anything? The first hour, try to leave it to maintenance, but mm -hmm. you got any shrimp, shrimp questions? said, what is each of your least favorite chore to do in the fish slash shrimp house? You can go first. Does it have to be fish and shrimp related? Because I feel like just Obviously. chore. All right. Okay. 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 We all know laundry is the worst. <laughs> no, no. Doing dishes is the worst. Oh, yeah. I, You're a weirdo. Yeah. I have to wash my hands while I'm doing dishes. It's okay. Not water efficient. I'm trying to think. What is yours? Favorite? Don't put me. What is yours? It says each of yours. Put me on the hot spot like that. I'm trying the to think. The least favorite is algae removal. Now, I don't have to do it, but it drives me absolutely bonkers to see algae at all. Um, so I will meticulously sit in a tank for hours and like come back and pick out little things. So, um, that absolutely drives me crazy. <laughs> I, I'm going to come back to you on that crypt keeper. I, I don't know what the thing I hate the because most the is. I like worst, algae removal. Because the worst you may need to, like what cleaning out the filters. Those are terrible when you have to go and blow it out because sponge filters, you know, like, a, let's talk about maintenance. So I clean the sponge filters. Now with our tanks and shrimp tanks, I do fish filters a lot more often than I do shrimp tanks. Obviously more bio load, you're going to wash the ones like that. Um, usually with a sponge filter, the rule is if you start to see less bubbles, you want to clean the sponge filter. Um, with the fish, I do it a lot more often because they do produce a lot more ammonia than shrimp. So I just do those when we try to do the water change on the tank. Um, so I'll just rinse them real quick. Um, doesn't hurt the bacteria on them. Why are you looking at me like that? Because you're wrong. But that's not your your chore that you hate the most. The chore that I hate the most, and Shelby's gonna agree with me when I say it. It's feeding. <laughs> it's feeding. You're, you no, can't tell me I'm I wrong. Can't you can't stay to feed with you. <laughs> no, you it's feeding. You gotta feed them I'm fine all. With feed by no, myself. it takes so long to feed everything. We have to do it. She feeds the fish every day. We feed the shrimp every other day or every three days, but... Yeah, you won't take my thing where you feed half the house. No, I'm all for that. Let, let's let's do that. Okay. That'll be a lot Get better. Get back to the topic. But I also think we should feed like a quarter of the house every day. So that way it's like, boom, 20 minutes. <laughs> no. Quarter That's done, the next work. day, quarter done. No, because we're going to forget. We're both forgetful people. And you think feeding a quarter of the house, we're not going to go, which quarter did we feed? <laughs> no, ah, absolutely not a good idea. No, because we'll do half one day, half the other day. No. We'll remember. But anyways, That'll back to easy. the sponge filters. Um, so a lot of times when um, you get a sponge filter that will not work anymore, what it is is you actually have to take every single piece of it apart and then... I usually use the water hose. You can use an air compressor works really well as well. Like when we have the smaller one, but we have a gigantic one out back and I ain't about that life. Um, so, and then you have to spray the little 
part where the airline hose goes in, that actually gets clogged. And inside, there's like three little tiny holes that create the bubbles. And that, that gets clogged all the time. So you have to spray really good in it and then get it back together. And then it works perfectly. Like, you never have to replace it. Like, hang on the back filters. You have to constantly replace the filters. Yes, you can clean some of them. But obviously, they have a life on them where sponge filters, I mean, can last what I'm. We probably have sponge filters at least eight years old. There are some, though, that the the ones with the they plated pull. bottoms, they can rust out. But yeah, but that's very rare they even make them. The ones you're right. talking about, the double sponge filters, not so Super much. Super easy, yeah. yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah. If you have fun. crawfish, they can eat them. Some fish will chew them apart, but... If you only had a few tanks, it's not that difficult. But when you get to doing a whole rack and you want to get the rack working properly, and about... 13 of those are not working. It takes a little bit of time because you have to wash in between so you don't contaminate another tank. Um, sometimes you can go between a couple of them if you know they're both like perfect tanks, but like still you don't want to chance it. So you got to go wash your hands and come back and do the next. So yeah, I, it's a little time consuming, but it, it really works out in the long run. I really can't stress like how important cross contamination is. Like, oh, I'm taking care of this many tanks or doing this or, or maintenance on that. It's, it's not going to take that long, but then when you think that after you touch one tank before you move on to the next, you've got to clean all of your tools or, you know, if you're scraping the tanks, you got to clean the scrapers and then you got to wash your hands and all that, all that jazz. So it takes a lot of time walking around soaping up and whatnot because you got to make sure all the soap is washed off afterwards. So it's like washing your hands twice to do another tank. And because of that, it adds up. Um, and then like I mentioned, doing all the water changes before I do my water changes, you can make it all the way through. Now <laughs> we also like redid our whole entertainment center. We no, do we have a little are. bit more room now. He's got more room to roam around behind us, but, um, I'll go through and I'll mark the tanks. So if we're doing one of the racks and it's got 36 tanks on the rack. I'll mark the tanks one through 36 and Shelby knows that that is the order that the shrimp or the fish are in the best condition. So we'll always start with the shrimp tanks first because I'm not too worried about Hydra or planaria or anything like that in our fish tanks. Uh, I, I usually, you know, prevent and do the best we can at, at dipping, but some of the fish came with floaters and it was just, impossible to keep them out um so I, i'm not too worried about that but she goes in lot in order one to 36 and the best one should go through and scrape them and then if i star it she'll go through and take the filter apart and clean the filter and the reason why she does all that is usually i'm going right behind her and with the siphon and siphoning out all the water and then right behind myself, I'm moving the water from the trash can uh, that's usually RO water with mixed minerals or tap water with prime. And then we, you know, fill up the tanks as fast as we can without disrupting the substrate. And then she's also got a few other things here and there that she does like algae removal and stuff like that that I just don't want to risk getting my hands involved with that and then also mixing the water for the water changes and stuff like that. It's a lot riskier and prevents a lot more cross-contamination doing it this way. It does seem lazy. You'll give me that look, but oh, it's No, it's giving helps. Jaden that look. Oh, all right. Sun was up. I don't know what it, I, I think he was still reading his book. I think so. He put his book away. I, I think he got it done. I'm very proud of him. He's past his bedtime, but it was for a good reason. So it's okay. Uh, Avon said, I don't know if this is relevant or not, but could we focus on the next video to be aquatic isopods? Also, congratulations for being one of the few shrimp sellers to move, to sell these as well. So maybe not aquatic isopods, but maybe we can do aquatic invertebrates. Talk about shrimp maybe just a little bit. Uh, talk about seed shrimp. I, there's just not too much to talk about the isopods for a whole hour but i can give you a good 15 minute starting segment shelby does the thumbnail and announces all the videos so maybe crypt keeper just a tad reminder for us uh sleep has been 
All right. So I was actually going to write it down in the notes, so we, we should remember that. But that is a great idea. Thank you. Um, yeah, the isopods, uh, they just do really well in our shrimp tanks. I'm very upset with Shelby today. She broke my number one rule with the isopods, actually. <laughs> and she didn't care. Nope. No, still don't. <laughs> I was so happy to say that all of the isopods that we had ever sold, and I knew how much that was because we sold them on the website, <laughs> all came out of a little seven and a half gallon tank. So now those minus today's order of five isopods. Yeah. Well, I caught like seven, eight. So today's 20. order came out of a different tank. And just because it's... I want to see how many isopods, and not only that, but our seven and a half gallon tank has like a massive isopod. Like it's two or three times bigger than like your average adult on the round in there. So we got to get Goliath to start breeding and putting on some extra ones. So I'm hoping the other tank, bigger tank, more volume, more chances of Goliath, we can start working on that. To make bigger ones. Jamie said, um, I read Grant and Shelby are now in fourth place worldwide for freshwater ownership just behind us. <laughs> That'd be crazy. I thought it was I something wonder. serious for a second. <laughs> I was like, oh, fourth, like for having the most aquariums or something like that. I'm like, there's no way. Like, I know four shrimp breeders in Asia that have more little tanks than I do. I said maintenance for 400 tanks. Poor Shelby, really making you work hard. <laughs> I do the dirty work. You know, I forgot about that. I absolutely hate cleaning the lids too. That's, it really does. Now I have a little system on cleaning lids. Um, I actually do it in a row. I take them all outside and I just pressure wash them down. Um, I do take a scraper because sometimes with the um, Hard water sponge oh. filter, it pops up water and you'll get just like green little dots on the lid. So you have to use a little tiny scraper to get it off if you want to be, you know, you don't have to. <laughs> it's nothing bad. But um, and then spray them all out, and then I have to wipe them down because you don't want to leave them soaking wet and put them back on. Um, so that's that's a little bit of a pain. I'll and take the duster the though, and I'll dust them. Oh yeah, but like that just doesn't work all the time. Dusters you know don't work that well on those. I know what the dust does to you, so I try to do <laughs> that as when I can. Uh, all right well so i was saying you go through you take care of like the algae and stuff like that i go back behind and do all the water changes behind her um we do take care of orders on mondays and saturdays and we try to take big advantage of orders to go through call out the tanks organize those so that way um certain lines stay high quality and nice grade. If there's like an order of say five medium grade uh, fancy <laughs> tigers or fish bones going out, I might gather an extra two or three out of that high grade tank just so that way the, it doesn't turn out to be a male or something like that and interrupt the genes going on. So you can get a little hookup from certain tanks just because I'm going through them and culling them at the same time as getting out shrimp orders. Kevin Tam asked, would you be worried about the water weight of a of the rack? What is the max? All right. So someone was a little worried about little, the weight on the tank. Um, my I family mean, included. Uh, however, I am a little bit rebellious, and usually <laughs> if my dad says something, I'm going to try and prove him wrong. So there's a whole bunch of Home Depot hardware that I never put on here that it was recommended to me. Um, also, someone tried to prove, Eddie Aquatics, tried to prove to me that nails were stronger than screws and we had this whole debate and i asked my dad my dad told me da, 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 da. think about decks they make decking screws and all those people and uh i figure screws are fine we pre-drill the holes so that way uh none of the wood splits or anything like that i try to avoid any knots and things like that that's going to be the weaker spots in the wood but um we definitely had some doubts all right but 
I went through, I dropped the bottom uh, floor onto two by fours. So that way the entire weight of the bottom rack was on the two by fours. So that way the rack went from holding a thousand pounds of water weight down to only uh, about 800, uh, 8,000 pounds. So 10,000 to 8,000. Are you filling up our I think it's 800 pounds of water. Yeah. What? Are you filling up our water? No, no, no. I turned that off. We're good. You're distracting me. I didn't know what's going on. But the max depends on the way you build it. Each two by four, I think, is rated for like 2,000 pounds vertical. I can't remember the horizontal. You, you got to look it all up, do the math, and double check yourself. But well, all this needs to be on uh, concrete slabs, not on um, any in, in any trailers or any second stories, apartment buildings. Don't do it. <laughs> I was just going to say, but okay. you've got to make sure you've got the floors to do it. Our floors are tile on concrete. We don't have um, any issues with like a second story or an apartment or anything like that. So our max might be a little bit different than yours. Yeah, I've seen some people in trailers can do it by reinforcing the floors underneath. Um, but I've seen a lot of them damage their floors and it go through their floors. So um, it's not good. But there is, I mean, for our rack, it is drilled into the supports of the actual house. Um, and it has 110 gallon tanks um, and horizontal beams um, is what you really want to be concerned with. Because I heard that, or was it vertical? Which one's the one that holds more weight? Vertical holds vertical. more. Horizontal is going to hold less. And you can double up if you're worried about it. But uh, we just went through and did five tanks as our maximum between... Right, and if you see, there's two. two oh, I went the wrong way. There's two supports on that. Like, goodness, I hate this inverted. Like this, that's two, two boards by fours together. So to make it a four by four. Because the four by fours, they were not in the best condition. So I decided to make my own four by fours out of two by fours. I think that I hope that answered it. We're all over the place with that one. <laughs> I figured this would be all over the place in the chat and the talk a little <laughs> bit of everything i figured i was gonna list off a bunch of stuff and you're gonna tell me i'm wrong you're and wrong and i forgot a bunch of stuff <laughs> like i totally would have forgot about cleaning off the lids um i would say we only really do that when we have like big people uh come over to the house like jason from primetime aquatics she did it for chris biggs when he was over here like that um if she has the time she'll go through and, and take care of it when she can but like she had just done it for Chris Biggs. Nothing needs to be done for like when my mom's coming by. Yeah, uh, Chris Biggs was in town a month ago, so everything. It's not that often. Yeah, honestly, you gotta think about like you, you just wipe it down once in a while when you're feeding it or something. It doesn't take too much. Um, the best thing is to do little things at a time. Don't try to just do all your maintenance in one day. Like that. That doesn't matter if you have one tank or several tanks. So if you needed to do a water change, don't do the water change and clean everything else in the tank in one day. It's just going to overwhelm you. Small things here and there, just like house chores. It's, it's just added into the routine. <laughs> when you go to work tomorrow, I'm going to go through and take the duster and hit all the tops of the tanks that are eye level. My mom's short, so she can't <laughs> see like the top tanks. Yeah, that's a good thing. So it's 400 tank feeding is insane. You pair are fully addicted. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's it, not too bad with shrimp. Fish. You is just a little don't want to say I'm right. You will just you're done, you're playing but, Tina on the bait team right now, and you're just fighting the opposite side. <laughs> you know it. All right, but feeding is definitely a routine. Shelby feeds the house. It's just a puddle underneath. Somebody might have spilt it filling up their cup. So. Oh, I try to get you to put have... your cup somewhere else and not in the puddle that I had made. Oh, man. But we got the laptop <laughs> lifted. It's not in jeopardy. We're good. But Shelby feeds all of the fish every single day. I have the discus now, so I feed them every single day. I also try to feed, like, You're wrong. the celestial pearl danios. <laughs> And I've got this the Monster Mash tank up there, and they always look at me when I feed the discus, and I feel guilty if I don't feed them as well. I try to feed Shelby's Rummy Nose Resbora tank just because it's on the way to put the 
fish food back, and then I feed the pencil fish. So, Fishing Master just said, what are you guys using to wash your hands between tanks? Um, so, we just wash our hands with normal soap. Um, I use just regular Dove soap. It's usually not. I don't have scented Dove soap. We just use regular. <laughs> so, depending on what we're doing, though, I will scrub my hands a lot longer. But like I mentioned, I basically wash my hands Boiled with the soap. Them. And then I wash my hands to make sure that all Residue. of the soap is off. I crank up the water as about as hot as I possibly can. So that way, you know, I'm not hurting myself. But I want to make sure I'm nuking anything else. So when um, I kind of got this routine, because when I went in for my C-sections, the, what they have you do is actually wash yourself down with just a bar of soap. Uh, that is the cleanest way to get yourself ready for any surgery where it has to be all germ free and everything like that. So that's what they suggest. And that's what I use. I mean, if it's good for us to have ourselves cut open and not get sick, I think the shrimp can handle it. Just no perfumes or anything. You want to use as natural soap as you can and something that will clean them good. Hot water. Also, another thing to think about is you really want to avoid sticking your hands in the tanks as much as possible. If you've got to pull out algae or something like that, try to use a net, try to use tweezers, tongs. <laughs> Interrupt me for Austin's fantastic. Oh, I didn't fantastic. see that. Why, why is this super so sticker? I can't see these. Thank you so much for the $3 super sticker. Much appreciated, man. Hope you're doing well tonight. You All cut right. off at the weirdest. I thought you, you were, were going to so say something, awkward. too. Thank you so much. Leaving me hanging. Freak. I'm the only I'm one saying thank you. you Show your saying. appreciation, Shelby. <laughs> thank you. The disrespect. I'm sorry. <laughs> apologize for my comrade here. All right. So, where were we? Bunny Viper said, I heard someone very popular say he never washed his hands oh, before it. a tank, so he wouldn't get anything in the water. Nope, definitely wash your hands. Just rinse very well. Yeah, it, at least rinse. I mean, you could, I mean, do like a hydrogen peroxide dip if you want to get like technical. I think a lot of places do that with their nets. It's like... I think then I'd have like really, yeah. really dry hands though. Yeah. So like here, here's how I feel. If I... So this might sound crazy, but I'm purposely growing hydra in a tank. It's a shrimp tank. It's got fish in it as well. But... We, we need to do a video on Hydra, and I had filmed somebody else's tank, and then my phone got, like, destroyed a week afterwards. I lost all the footage. So, long story short, I contaminated one of the shrimp tanks with Hydra. I've actually been feeding the Hydra with powdered foods, trying to get it to grow, even if it's not eating baby shrimplets and stuff like that. So... I've got them going in a tank. I'm trying to get it to where it's like just crazy mad. And then we kill off that one tank. But like, say if I wanted to grab some moss out of that tank, because it does have some beautiful mini Pelia moss in it. And the person just didn't care about Hydra. They had to have the mini Pelia. I told them, hey, it's not on the website, but it, I've got it in a tank. If you, you want it, you got to treat it. Whatever. All right. I wouldn't take the mini Pelia out of that tank and then go to a different tank to harvest uh, Christmas and moss without washing my hands because then I would be bringing some hydra from one tank over to the other. And if you don't know what hydra are, they're like little tiny miniature freshwater jellyfish that attach themselves to the side of the tank and they try to grab on to little tiny things, mostly seed shrimp and daphnia and stuff like that. But they can get kind of beefy and get some of your baby shrimp roots. And fish. I've seen videos. Yeah. So but it's the small things you don't really see when you're working in tanks. And I mean, the smallest piece of algae can get on your hands or on your scraper. So um, between tanks with algae, we will use the scraper. And to clean it, I actually use um, alcohol, like 90% um, alcohol. I spray it down and I just let it soak for a good time. And then I rinse it really well. Like you cannot... You don't want to smell any of the alcohol on the tool because like it lasts, but uh, rub it down really well and give it a good rinse and it's good to go to the next tank. You know what I want to do here, but like we can't 
maybe on like over here. I want to do like a jar of like planaria where we feed the planaria blood worms and we just try to cultivate blood worms and then do a jar for scuds and a jar for hydra and we have like our little yes yeah, so let's just put nasty stuff in our house like that yes that's but like, like just contain it this. on the wall or something like yes. this I think, I think they say that about every disease let's just contain it it should be for zombie science. apocalypse is gonna for happen. science we should do it i think chris really wants to talk about isopods you know he well said chris we i offered <laughs> for you to come see the aquatic isopods and you just totally left and forgot all about it uh eddie said like how you use that fitting to fill the tanks it doesn't pour heavy and doesn't touch the water very little cross contamination might like to see that in another video, we ain't bringing that out today, Eddie. That's a whole different thing. But basically, it's just a hook on top of the lid, and then it just bends upwards so that way the water flows up and doesn't go straight into the water like a dip. And then when the water was filled all the way up, it would be touching the nozzle. So I avoid that. Sorry. WB said, based on your experience, how would you describe what mosquito lava looks like to someone who has never seen them? Oh, man. So I got a, a larva. Story. I'm like literally just trying. To, like, what is lava? My first time ever seeing dragonfly larva, I was, we do a lot of tubing here in Florida. So um, this doesn't answer your question at all. But um like for mosquito larva i would describe them as like a bug version of a lamprey if you like know the little sucker fish lamprey with the crazy looking mouth basically kind of like that but like in bug version so that's my way to describe mosquito larva but in florida uh we do a lot of tubing if you don't know what tubing is it's where you go at one part of the river and you launch and you you're up river and you just let the flow of the river take you down and usually the adults have a bunch of beverages and it's depending on how long the river ride it can be anywhere between two to three minutes or you know those are like the hotel is the river rides but uh some of our rivers are like four hours long on tubing down them if you do the one right next to us it's that long um but I'm a good swimmer. I didn't like laying in a tube. I'm also a ginger, so I'd fry underneath the the Florida sun just laying on a raft. So I would snorkel and be in the water and just not even go down the river with a tube at all. And my very first time seeing the dragonfly larva, I saw this little green monster. And here I am. I must have been like 12 years old, maybe a little bit younger or so, but... Thought I was worried about alligators and water moccasins, but I didn't know what that possibly could have been. Like, I thought I had known all of my Florida insects at that point. I felt like I'd been outside. I'd explored the rivers quite quite often as a little kid. I grew up on the Wikiwachi River. I'd been dip netting almost my entire life, and I've never seen anything like that. And if it's that small, how big does it get? And I, I try to crawl into somebody's raft. I can't remember what I did, but I didn't want to be in the water anymore because of the, the dragonfly larva. But I was trying to describe it to people. And they're like, you're crazy. You, you this That sounds like, no, you're just making things up. You're tired and want to get off the raft. And I was, I was legitimately worried I was going to get bit by something. You know, I had no idea how big they got. And I had just seen like surface and other, you know, evolution, other movies at that time. And I was, I don't know what's in the water. So, uh, yeah, I guess like an insect lamprey is the best way to describe mosquito larva. What about you? Man, that took you way long. By the way, we left all the kids' lights on. So that's why Jamie was still up reading his book. Oh, okay. um, the mosquito larva? Yeah, it looks like a little alien. Kind of looks like a praying mantis alien thing. But it's got a snorkel, basically, how it breathes. So it has to get up to the top of the water and then... we got to start photographing. We need to take nano photos of all pest. Water pest. Dr. Anthony asks, who is your favorite Pasco speaker? 
You're supposed to put me on one of those shows <laughs> where it's like, answer this question or Get eat, taste. <laughs> eat this one chip challenge. <laughs> like, I'd rather go eat the, the one chip, the Pacquiao one chip, than answer that. You're both in chat. I can't let you down. <laughs> Nathan said, how many tanks are for you as a family? Also, how many tanks have fish? So, last I counted, I think it was 78 tanks have fish. And we're at 388 well, it's tanks. It's definitely more than 78 now. Because I got all those fish from the club. It's oh, definitely yeah. up to 80, maybe 85. Maybe 90. <laughs> Locked she does this she... with her fish invasion. <laughs> oh, it's only four, four pairs of killifish. Shelby, it's nine to 12, depending on how you want to add these up. All right. Yeah. The guppies, the endlers, anything pretty much small at the auction that looks pretty cool. You know, but we who's your more. favorite Pasco speaker? Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> I mean, you keep me awake, you're good. <laughs> I have actually fallen asleep when I was working like 70 hours, and then they like put, I think I already said this story on the live stream, but they, they turned the lights off and let the speaker talk, and I was like, that's not a good idea, and he talked really slow. Now, we've both got... Both were amazing talks, though. I learned something from both of them, now so we got it next, was incredible. Next week, we've got Eric Bodrock as our speaker, and well... Some have been calling him the best fish breeder in North America, but I think that's kind of a shot at Bill Shields. I don't know if we can do that to him. And Thelma, who just turned 90. So I would say maybe best hobbyist fish breeder in America. I don't know if I can like announce him as the best fish breeder in America. And Bill Shields is like in the, in the crowd. Like that'd be kind of messed up. No, wait, he's not going to be there because he's going to be at the Florida State Fair. I could totally do that. Somebody doesn't come to our meetings. We're good. All right? All right. Anything else in chat? Not we really got to go back to maintenance. Yeah, she's talking about screws and nails. He has to go back to maintenance. Um, so Shelby will also go through, trim up some plants and stuff like that. If I mark them, if they don't need algae removal or anything like that. Um, a lot of our plants get trimmed like we do the Pasco Club. And we have to sell clippings and stuff like that. If we don't have them up on the website, I don't want to throw them away. I usually just hack them down and bag them up and bring them to the Pasco Club. And then we'll write the right names on the bags. And then they'll still ask us twice what the name is. Jamie H -R -A. said, It's on the bag. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jamie said, what do you think will be the max amount of tanks you could have before you would think it would become too much? I'm happy you asked this question, Jamie. I actually thought about this. People have asked me this a lot. <laughs> Why do you not automate the tanks? <laughs> that poor dog. Go help him. You go. I, it is way harder for me to walk around it's this so trap. It's so much cuter to watch him. The poor dog is trying to move his dog bed out from Thea because she is sitting on both the dog beds. And then if it, that hasn't made it worse on him, he's got the step stool ladder from when somebody was catching tank tie. That was you. It was me. And left yeah. the ladder where the dog beds go. But Thea was sitting on both of them and Shrimp's trying to pull it out with his teeth. And she's just laughing at him. Help the poor guy. She'd rather watch and suffer. All right. But so they, they asked, like, why don't you automate things? Well, first of all, inside the house, we can't really do it. So it's set up where I have enough room to automate things behind the tanks and then still be able to tweak things and work on them. Say there's a leak or a problem with our 100 tank rack system. Well, how do I get back behind those tanks without going through and completely tearing down the tank system and stuff like that? Um, the other thing is we're working in those tanks a lot more when we do the siphoning and stuff like that. It, it just helps us be more active inside the tanks. If I could just flip a switch and the tanks drained, flip another switch and they all filled up, 
I probably would feed less. I wouldn't look at the tanks as much. I just wouldn't be as actively involved with the shrimp. More as much. like he would drain it all the way and then overfill it. <laughs> no, it all be on it all of them. They'll all be on float valves and stuff like that. So <laughs> I, I say for here at the house, the most that we can handle is 500 tanks. So yeah. we've got 10 sections set up in the house right now. If we add the tanks in the Jaden's room and we add in the tanks to our bedroom and stuff like that, it'll still be 10 sections. Just I'll have to figure out a way to do more water in one day. We've already on. talked about that. I didn't want to run your ears off of that again. But if we just got a large standing tank in the hallway where we could prep over 150 gallons of RO water overnight, we'd have more water every day. I just add in another filter uh, to the trash can army. That way I can pump, not a filter, but a pump. That way I can get water into the tanks. But I would be running two, three pumps at one time. The risk for flooding is going higher. Um, the devastation from flooding three tanks at, a, at one time is, is, is obviously three times as bad. Um, so it, it comes with its risks. But with the risk comes reward. And I think it'll be a lot fun to be like, ha, 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 moving hoses around and stuff like that with three three pumps going at once. And it'll keep you more entertained rather than, oh, what's, what's in the kitchen? There's always something good. <laughs> I just got to find it. It's, it's behind something. Um, well, it'd probably be a little bit more than 500, honestly, with the, the rack in the bedroom and Jaden's room to finishing the garage. And then, I said 500, yeah, but then but, Shelby got rid of dressers. Sky's the then, limit at yeah. this point. But it's, it's just going to be like filling the spot. And then at that point, they're most likely I'd have to come home and just work from home. Uh, but that's that's a that's possibility soon anyways no. you're only working three days a week at this point and this time last year we were not doing nearly as well with the shrimp and everything that we are doing this year so and we've already got a ton of different products and stuff in the works uh breeder boxes are on the website pre-order now uh, today will be the final sale day for buy five get one free after that Everything goes back to normal pricing. Um, even some of the things on the website will be going back to normal prices. Uh, things have been selling more than we thought, and we're kind of running out of things here and there. But have no fear. Uh, stuff like the super black crystals and the black calcios will be going on the website. Um, you guys, all of you right now, pre-orders for that. Not even have to wait. Just message us at thegardenofeater at gmail.com and we'll sell those early to you guys before we get them on the website. So anybody watching that, that's all you got to do to get those. I'm sure there's other shrimp that we'll be offering up on the website as well. Sorry, green jades, green emeralds. We just can't breed those fast enough and I've, I've got no idea when they'll be available, but it'll be a couple months. Does anyone tell you that you talk too much? Has anybody told you that? <laughs> You say that too much? No, no, not yet. Aaron said, just found my first baby Caradina shrimp. Thanks to Grant for identifying my problem. Oh. Well, maybe because I talk too much. <laughs> Frank said, stem soap. You can purchase online, non-scented soap, bar, and pump foam. We also do have, like, Saturday markets here that people hand make soaps that have, like, um, all natural, like, Milk, Does it have stem cells? Like I'm about it. <laughs> oh man, we haven't even made it to an hour. <laughs> Is that off? Is that taboo? I'm sorry. I'm For some people. Corner. <laughs> um, I don't think they sold soap like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> said, "What is your favorite thing to use to clean outside of shrimp tank when company is coming?" <laughs> um, that always differs. It depends on what's on the outside. Like dog drool, awful, awful. But yeah, I would use Dawn um, on the outside of a tank. And I know people think Dawn is a 
you know, animal safe. It is not. It's not. That was the only thing that removes oil. Just like do not use that on your dogs because it removes their natural oils. Just like if you were using it on your head, it would remove, remove all the oils that you actually need for hair growth. Um, so I would not, but sometimes I have to, and it's gross from the dogs. But other than that, I would just use water and like a microfiber cloth usually works pretty good to get it off and then dry it with like a normal terry towel or something like that to actually get it dry. No, Matt, you're not a no, planaria. Geek, geek was I know, that. but I'm going to just tell him you're more like a scud. You're still part of the inverted gate crew, <laughs> but you might eat some of us, you know, <laughs> it's possible. Oh man. Thank you so much. Snap tights. It's congratulations on your air. I'm assuming you just watched the video. Yep, appreciate it. We're going to try and get another video out here in the next week. Since the mother is coming, the house should be pretty spotless. Oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah. we're going to do a... I know, like, Chris Biggs is going to come out with a tour video here soon and stuff like that. But his video will be different than ours. We've got several things that he hasn't seen. Um already added so so Crip says wow grant you gave up 90 tanks for fish are you feeling okay and then nate it's... said she just thinks them in while he's doing all the maintenance <laughs> that's funny no i do the most maintenance <laughs> but anyways um he know he watches me usually no, he buys you me read fish that wrong and then she just sneaks them in while doing all the oh maintenance. that's smart yeah yeah no he watches me and then he usually buys me fish and then complains about all the fish that I have. And he's like, I got you these. And then he's like, why do you have all these fish? And I'm like, I don't know. You bought me. No, because them. we got them. No. Because something was supposed to happen. And she was supposed to move them. And she hasn't moved them into these I just see more tanks. empty tanks for myself. For she just tanks. split them up and stuff like that. Just so more tanks. So I lost. <laughs> I knew how many tanks she had for fish. But joke's on her. I'm going to get those fish outside when it warms up. Could you use 20 longs with a divider to double the amount of shrimp, or is that not really worth it? So you could definitely use a divider to split the tank if you wanted to do two types of shrimp, but it's not really going to double the amount of shrimp that you can keep in a 20-gallon tank. You're better off like adding uh, some plants and stuff like that you're going to disrupt the flow. You're probably better off just running a solid 20 gallon long if you're going for mass numbers of shrimp. But a divider would help you keep two different types of shrimp in the same system. So getting notice says clear hallways are a plus. I wish my hallway was clear. <laughs> There's a trash can or two there. <laughs> or, two, or two. Try getting through the hallway with a huge laundry basket full of clothes. You know how hard There's it is? There's enough room though. No. And I volunteer to do that no, all the time. No, no. And before I could get to it, she does it before I could do John it. Morgan asks, any chances of getting some blue Galaris when you come to Dallas? So you might be in luck. I might give up one of my pair. Um, I am not breeding them currently. I have not, you know, given it a thought to try. Um, we have been, it's one thing after another right now. And I just don't see me able to dedicate, but I do have a lovely pair. I might be able to bring you so. Uh, just remind me, I will not remember, and you would have to remind us pretty close to the show and then right before we leave the show. <laughs> so, uh, Also, small chance that she's Shelby's not going to go to Dallas. Yeah, it's, well, because of Killy's fish themselves. So there is a, it depends on, um, you know, possibilities. There are some people in the hobby that I would like to meet. Um, interview and talk to at the Achilles Fist Association, um, which I believe is in Michigan this year. Yeah. Um, and then they have Dallas, Aquashella, and it really, I need to weigh out my options here because, you know, it really just depends on whether, you know, it's going to be worth it for one of them. But who knows? We might even do a split show. So send them with Grant. <laughs> I'm going to go visit his family in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll visit your family in Texas. Joke's on you. They do have a really nice house. Uh, I'm just going to hang out with Crick Keeper and Ruben. Mario says, are green jades harder to breed or just harder to keep in stock? So, 
Green jades will throw more coals than most other shrimp. No matter how much work you do on them, all that I've really been able to do is knock out the yellow and blue coals that we get from them. They still throw these like clear and just ugly looking uh, wild type almost coals. And so the actual amount of nice shrimp that they produce they don't all look good until they grow up. So I usually save those ones for breeders and try to keep them going and stuff like that. Um, there's a good chance if you buy coals, some of the coals will come out looking nice. But there is a few times of the year where we offer the high grade legit greens and they usually sell faster than we can you know, announce them available. So uh, just like I offer the Super Crystal Blacks and the uh black calcio is available i'll announce the the green emeralds and the green jades available on here before i post them up on the website we don't put stuff on the website until they get like 50 plus shrimp available so carbon said with my existing tank i vacuumed the substrate well some of it when i do water changes why do you not mess with the substrate in your caradina tanks so we don't mess with the substrate in any of our, our shrimp tanks just because some people do it and they don't have any issues. When somebody comes to me and they say, I've got issues with shrimp dying, one shrimp's dying every day or so, and not whole colony wipeout or anything like that, I'll go through parameters, everything checks out, they just did a water change, but also with that water change, they moved the plant or they took some rocks out, or the water change went in too fast, or something like that, and that causes a bacterial infection. So it's not going to happen with all the tanks. And so what generally happens is with people who vacuum up the substrates, they're, they're worried about babies during certain times and stuff like that. So it's not consistent vacuuming that they're doing. And it's every now and then. So stuff builds up. And it's just safer not to do it at all than to, to risk having it done. So we prevent putting in uh, botanicals and overfeeding so that way we don't have to worry about vacuuming at all. Yeah. And the only time we'll ever, like, vacuum, we don't actually touch the substrate. We actually, like, our fish tanks, we get mold and stuff, we'll go just above the substrate. Like, I never go into the substrate. It just... There's just no need for it. There's sometimes, I mean, if you really worry about things like that, I would just get some uh, Malaysian trumpet snails and have them do the dirty work for you. And then clean, you can slowly vacuum the top and get like most of the- The mom is lighter than stuff. the substrate. So even light, the, the smaller granules of aqua substrate will stay down at a certain level. You just gotta be slow with the, <clears throat> the siphon. Snap type. Do you test your waters for pH and things? We do when we are full through the 30 day cycle. We do test for the pH and the ammonia to make sure that after the water change that everything is good to go. Um, the only other time we'll test for pH or ammonia is if something's wrong, which is pretty rare. Um, most of the time, you know, a tank's going to be good. So testing the TDS is where we do, if we see something starting to happen, then you'll see that total dissolved solids going up a little bit, and then you'll want to test for anything else. But most of the time, we don't over worry about testing um, water. Just stay on top of your water changes, and most of the time, things will be okay. Did you want to add to that? No, you, you hit the nail on the head there. All right. So we'll, we'll start this early because, like, we're in between questions ow what do you mean start it early Keeper's question no we don't start it early we got a minute here <laughs> okay okay Stick so minute we're schedule. just gonna stay here and just not talk about anything because i gotta read well no is there anything else that we missed about the house like cleaning the lights every now and then the lights will get a little bit dusty, dusty on the bottom as well sometimes if you uh don't have lids on your tanks the lights can build up a little bit of algae or residue off of that so mm. we'll go through and we'll wipe those off mostly oh, yeah. just the, on the actual light itself yeah Is yeah that what you're saying, the bottom? yeah so yeah. Um, it's not it's like a buildup of dust that gets on it and it 
doesn't let the light actually work as good as it should. And we don't really add any like yearly back botanicals or bacteria or anything like that. So we just keep it simple. Water changes every other week. We feed every other day. We feed the fish every day. And it's Crypt Keeper time. Go. You're not even ready. Well, I was ready. I was actually ahead of time. And then you stopped me. <laughs> this is all your fault at this point. <laughs> oh. I didn't name it? Where is it? Oh, the struggle is real. My fault. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I'm a fan. Hey guys, how you doing? Good, how are you, man? Good, good. So uh, my question of the week is can we take uh, two different uh, crossbreeds to uh, achieve the same end goal? So, for example, a tangerine tiger crossed with a red king kong, and then also like a red tiger crossed with a red king kong. Will it come out with the, like the same outcome potentially? So, the the answer is yes, but also you can do some things depending on different kinds of shrimp as well. So, like for this example itself, the tangerine tiger and the red king kong, and then that cross can make several different kinds of pintos. So you can get uh, your normal like phenotype looking of the, your German belly pinto, the German spothead pinto, the zebra pinto and stuff like that, um, where you can also get all of those with the red tigers, uh, the red tiger King Kongs. Um, you could also do like fancy tiger lookalike phenotypes and stuff like that. Um, however, with the Red King Kong Red Tiger Cross, you won't be able to get Galaxy Pintos and Rendonashi and the Red, uh, the Galaxy uh, Tigers and stuff like that. So, um, yes, there are certain things that can look like the exact same phenotypes from different crosses. However, there are certain phenotypes and certain lines that you have to use uh, specific types of shrimp in order to achieve that. Okay. So for the ones that can produce the same phenotypes, is there any way to uh, determine after the fact uh, which original bases were used? Or is that kind of difficult once they are hybridized? So like the difference between these two lines right here is the tangerine tigers are going to produce the, the, line, the back line. For the red tigers, you won't ever be able to do that. So just by breeding out a generation or two, you'll be able to tell if it's got tangerine tiger or the Aurora blue tiger genes in it. So that right there is your, your first sure uh, tail sign. Um, there, there's probably four or five different crosses where uh, we can talk about how uh, certain like Michelings could be involved in certain crosses where one type you're going to get all Thai bees and then another type you might get half Thai bee and half Thai Thai bee and stuff like that where you're only getting that because the Michelin has the Taiwan bee gene or if you used other types of shrimp in that same cross you wouldn't get that so oh okay that's definitely good to know thank you so much yeah no problem man you're doing good Having a good week now? The, oh, it's uh, been, a, been a busy week. Uh, I got a closed loop air system installed behind me, and uh, I've actually got that running. Uh, hopefully, you guys don't hear it, but it's just like a small little hum, so I'm super happy about that. Definitely better than the air compressor that I did have. <laughs> and I got the TV hung back up. I've got a five gallon scaped off to my right. So I've been. Keep them busy. The tanks look good behind you, man. Looking good. Oh, thanks. So. Yeah, no, normally I sit right about here for the stream. Oh, I was going to say, it looks all totally different. Yeah. Not the TV behind you then, huh? Well, now, now that I've got the TV behind me and it's got, uh, let me turn my controller back on, but it's uh, actually got your website up. Nice. <laughs> so I figured I'd uh, sit in front of that today. 
And if you guys scroll all the way to the bottom, there's this really helpful uh, part down here called new products. And that is where you're going to see those fancy new P&W breeder boxes that are available for pre-order. Definitely recommend checking those out. Oh, I appreciate <laughs> it, man. So cool. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> I was like trying to figure out what it was <laughs> behind you. I was like, it looks good, but like, what exactly is it? It's like motivational quotes. My eyesight is going really bad. And Shelby's trying to rely on me to read the menu at a certain place. And I'm like, Shelby, yep. what are you doing here? So we, we've got the phones that can do the 10 times zoom. So we just, you know, use the phone so we can read menus. We're, so We're at that point. She's got contacts in and she can't read it. I'm, I'm done. For it. Yep. Well, a couple streams ago, you mentioned that you needed me to hop back to chat right away so that I can mod and drop the links. Well, I just visually showed everyone how to get there so, like, so <laughs> oh no i appreciate it man Thank you, you go yeah, beyond uh actually shelby was like so convinced in the last video that we just did uh the only thing that i found that she did wrong in the last video was she tagged you and quoted you and used your logo for the shrimp show and i was like shelby <laughs> He wasn't at Dallas. He's like, yeah, he was. <laughs> so, yeah, you're just so involved in your, you know, we saw you at two or three shows last year. I don't know. If, I think it was just two, but it feels like yeah, three just shows two. last year. And so, yeah, we just, she assumed that you are in the last video. I was like, I want to give him credit, <laughs> but no, it's it's Poseidon's Pets. So, yeah, yeah. Kyle, Kyle did the video for that show. It's more in his local uh, area. Yeah, uh, Kyle at Poseidon's Pets did one, and then uh, so did Jerry at Papa Shrimp. So. Yeah. And then uh, you'll be at the next one, hopefully. So. Yep. You'll get uh, that, that's the plan, video. anyway. I'm sorry, uh, I didn't hear that. I said you'll get in the next Ruben update video. All right. <laughs> so uh, are you guys going to be heading to the Keystone Clash this year? Uh, I heard there's ice cream. Um, <laughs> I'll probably make it because of that. We've got some stuff going on, and I'll, I'll know more exactly what the deal is here in the next two weeks. So we'll have all of our shows booked and scheduled in. Uh, they added a shrimp contest onto the date where I was planning on going to talk in Pennsylvania. So I'm, I, everything's all backwards right now i gotta figure it all out where we're gonna go gotcha. what we're gonna do but chances are we're gonna go to the keystone clash between the clash aquashella and the triple crown those were the best shows last year so i'd like to keep those up next year aqua expo was great but it was only a one-day show um and they might make it a two-day show this year. I, I don't know exactly what's going on with that. They haven't announced dates for that. So I want to make sure we make it to all the places we want to go. What are you thinking? Aqua Expo in Tennessee was only a one-day no, show last that's year. That's not Aqua Expo. That's Aqua Expo. It was not Aqua Expo. That's Aqua Expo. Aqua Expo South Florida. Uh, You're Aquaticon. thinking of Aquaticon. <laughs> I was wrong oh, Goodness for gracious. Sorry. My apologies. <laughs> You lost three people because you couldn't get it right. Good going, Grant. It's all, it's all your fault. fault. <laughs> we we should be making it. Are are you thinking about going to that expo in North Carolina? The uh, I haven't even looked at that one yet. Um, send me the link in a uh, private message, and I'll uh, take a look and uh, see if I can make it work. I got I'd like you. to. I'd like to get to the, a couple others this year, other than the Keystone Clash and Aquashella. It's in uh, North Carolina on June tenth, I believe. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, I'll definitely be looking into it. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem, man. And you, uh, you have a great week, and uh, we'll see you uh, in a week's time. Thank you. All righty. See you later, guys. Thanks. I'm so awkward when say goodbye to him i don't want to kick him off all right and said what air pump do you use in the kids room and is it quiet to sleep in yeah so we use alita air pumps throughout the house i uh we had eight alita air pumps that no nine alita air pumps that 
pump all the house, all the air in the entire house. Um, they're quiet enough that for the most part, you just hear the bubbles over the air pumps. If you'd like try to listen for it, you can definitely hear the air pumps, but for the most part, it becomes white noise. And it's actually like a problem when we go to hotels with how quiet it is. So I'll have to crank the AC down so that the fan kicks on and runs the whole night. And when it like <laughs> finally catches up, then it's complete dead silence. I end up waking up in the middle of the night and I'm like, ah. Oh. I can hear him breathing. <laughs> and I'm like, stop breathing. He's like, I'm just breathing normal. And I'm like, stop. <laughs> it's too loud. It's, it's a great humming noise, but it's not like a loud... Um, it's nowhere near as loud as one little tiny whisper pump that sits on, you know, like the little air pumps. Those things are like ridiculous. It'll shake and rattle a whole thing. But I had to show everyone how amazing this is that my dad and brother made me. It is so cute. It's so shiny on here, but it's purple and blue. Look at this little wiggly. It's so cute. This thing is amazing. And we got some lizards too for the kids, but it's purple and uh, pink, like. And blue. I want to put it on the truck antenna so it just sits there and every time the truck blows, it's like ah! <laughs> I think it would look hilarious blowing but down the wind. We don't we'll have snap our antenna. On the truck antenna, the truck's got an antenna. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd probably snap it. Or it it would break itself. It would be hilarious. <laughs> it's worth it. Uh, when you ship shrimp, what's your ratio of shrimp to water? Like 12 ounces water, 12 shrimp? So, I believe what we use is exactly one cup of water for um, our, our poly bags. And in the poly bags, we'll put, depending on how far the shrimp have to travel and stuff like that, generally speaking, mostly 30 shrimp per bag for one cup of water. Uh, the breather bags, we'll use two cups of water in the breather bags. But the most we usually put is like 50 shrimp and then we throw extras for the 50 so it might end up being you know 60 65 shrimp in the two cups of water but generally one one cup of water per uh 30 shrimp yeah and it depends on where you're shipping you want to have more water and like how much you can fit in because the water will keep the parameters more stable the more water you have in the bag um and you know some of the neos really don't need that much water they're they're not going to produce that much waste uh ray asked am i breeding them a pistos yet those are grants so the, the, the pistos are mine i uh, have yeah. them in a tank that chris biggs suggested they should go in it wasn't the tank i was going to put them in um but i never see them i know i know they're there though because i get worried and i'm like they gotta be alive still right and i check on them they're all still alive um but they're in the tank with the angels and a rainbow and shelby's emperor dungeons and i want to get all of those fish out of there and just i see one of the epistles right now so they're doing all right it came up he's right there you put them in that tank that's where chris told me to chris. put them in no it's chris, my tank dude knows his sick words yeah get him out of there no, Brandon right, says, I like how Crip has his own intro song. Yes, I, I actually had a lot of fun making that. I was so so Crip, excited to make it. Crip does a lot of work for us behind the scenes and stuff like that. Even in the front lines, he helps man, da man down the fort uh, and run the booth for us when we're doing the aquascape contest and stuff like that. And uh, he he's a great, great source of information uh, if you're wanting to know like shrimp foods and the shrimp contest and stuff like that on his channel. So I like to support people uh, who are good for the hobby and Crypt Keeper, he's good for the hobby. Chiller Method said, will you be shipping the breeder boxes and shrimp together or will they be separate? So if you ordered, it depends on how much you ordered. If you only ordered one uh, breeder box, we'll ship it with the shrimp that you order. Um, it'll all be wrapped separately so they won't be a problem to each other, so. Um, most likely this. it will go with your shrimp. What? Besides we, Michelle. We can take the breeder boxes and put the shrimp in the breeder box and then ship them out. Mm -hmm. So they're even safer. Even um, so if you ordered shrimp 
and you want the shrimp before the breeder boxes get here and the shipping price is free because you added on the shipping thing or something like that we will ship once for free if you want us to ship twice then you'd have to cover the the extra additional shipping fee however if you spend two hundred dollars I'll, I'll ship twice for you for free if that's the case is there was one order for, for over 200. any shows in jacksonville i don't know yet no, so nothing was, in jacksonville but we've got a show in daytona and that should be like a two and a half hour drive tops for you from jacksonville so that'll be the show for you to make for sure i know there's a reptile show in jacksonville what is what what lights do you guys use um they're all different uh but we try to buy the cheapest led lights online because we buy the they're eight feet right so it's eight feet long, but we can't find eight feet long t lights. The lights that we were able to buy that are aquarium LED water resistant lights, um, they are six foot or 72 inches. Uh, we generally buy Beamworks or Aquanites. Uh, for the most part, they are the cheaper ones on the market. Um, but we do have some Fluval lights. We like those a lot. Uh, they're just a little bit more expensive, but a little bit more durable, a little bit more hardy, more convenient with the whole phone app and stuff like that. Uh, they do have some other features that the Beamworks lights don't have. So it's all just preference. But when we set up so many tanks, we kind of did go as cheap as we possibly could. But we still went full spectrum. So that way you got the whole bang for your buck. Crip says if you feel awkward, you get to stay on there next time quiet while you're conducting the stream. <laughs> uh lady r said they're adorable shelby where'd you get them i need one my dad and brother are making them they got a 3d printer and they've been going crazy and they made me something special they know how much i love axolotls and the color purple so and i'm also trying to figure out with them things like for our shows i'm hoping to bring these to shows or even carry them on our website um just like all different you know reptile and aquatic themed you know, 3D printed toys because this thing is amazing. And I can wrap this up real quick in newspaper and ship that out in a shrimp package. So, you know, your but brother should, we got to figure out how to resell to, these because this is someone else's design. We should give them away though on the, on the giveaways. We could give them away. And not with not I want the them one all, he gave you. I I'm just saying all. you could print one of those and we can give them away. Yes, we could definitely do that once in a while. Sorry. Hey, Zen. You know what we forgot to do? We forgot to set up the $50 memberships. Uh, that's ridiculous. What? No, the thing? $50, we do a $50 membership, and then every month they get a box. Oh, a little box. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Once we are more um, remembering everything. But anyways, Mario said, y'all know any any shows on California? in california so Goodness. yes there is a show in sacramento put on by the sacramento aquarium society uh luke wang is in the channel slightly below you having no. one <laughs> in sacramento june 3rd and 4th it is the week before the shrimp contest it is still a possibility luke that will make that show we've got to look into air travel and stuff like that i mentioned i've got some stuff going on with family um, I, we need to make sure that that all goes through and then when they leave, I'll, I'll make all my plans and stuff like that. So I know I'm putting it on the back burner for another two weeks, but it just makes sense before I can put anything in stone. Abstract says once to one in red, we'll have to figure it out. So the deal with those is that 3d printed objects like these that everyone has, that's someone else's design. So <laughs> look at that. <laughs> um, so you got to figure out a way to actually be able to resell them, but we'll figure it out and then I will get back to you because it will be soon. I enjoy these a lot. They're so cute. It's just been around the house. The kids... I'm going to cry if you broke that. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I don't know I why it just done. slid off like that. I mean, it was... <laughs> Perfectly like that on the thing. My eyes are so no bad that I read this scuba Steve saying he ain't the only one who holds the fort down. 
I literally thought you said the only one who holds the fart down. And I'm like, man, did he talk about holding the fart? <laughs> it's too good, too good. Oh, man. Yes, yeah, Scuba Steve was at our booth one time. Thank you so much for watching it. But Grant did not inform me of who you are. And I'm like, I knew who you are because like passing, but like did not know you were going to be at the booth watching it. And I'm just like, come back. And I'm like, who is this? <laughs> Grant did not tell me this was going to be happening. Oh, I don't know how you don't know who Scuba Steve is. I, I knew mean, him. It's just not something like you did not inform me he's going to be watching the booth and he's just chilling there. I'm like, is he waiting for you to come back? Am I supposed to go get you? Like, what's going see, on? I knew I could trust Scuba Steve because he goes to all the shows. So if he were ever to do something at our booth, I'd, be, I'd just catch him <laughs> at the next show. I know where you go. Car got there. Shrimp in safe and sound. He said thank you. I'm so glad to hear they got there. We were talking about something else before I dropped the axolotl. Yeah. What it was. Yeah. You say something. <laughs> oh man. The axolotl is cool. Oh, you're, she's gonna paint them too. So. Maybe cool. I don't know. No, not maybe. You're gonna. <laughs> You see me walk right up, just write me down for one job. <laughs> oh man. Sin said, Have you checked current USA? Didn't didn't they used to make bigger lights? Might be wrong. I don't know. I think we and they have a current light. I think it's only 48 inches that they go up to. <laughs> I might be wrong though. Yes, this one means a lot to me. <laughs> Matt says, put Shelby in the box. <laughs> for the $50. Matt, I'm still waiting for your payment of $50,000. <laughs> I think with interest, it's gone up now. Oh. See, Didi, a box a month to sell. I don't think it'd be enough. I think you need one once a week, Didi, to maybe, get your fix in. See, now I think maybe we do a tier package. <laughs> 50 75 100 Oh, the $50 one guarantees five shrimp. The $75 one guarantees eight shrimp. The $100 one guarantees 12 shrimp every month. And then maybe Ooh. like a nice little plant, maybe some shrimp food, you know? In the mobile game, War Dragons, you can get a giant white axolotl. That's pretty cool. That's why a lot of kids, like axolotls are becoming more and more popular just because of Minecraft, having them in it. Yeah. Reading's becoming more and more popular just because of Minecraft. Like it. Yeah, you have to do like monthly uh, subscriptions to these people for these, and I'm just trying to weigh out what like what would be worth it, what wouldn't be worth it. Um, there's a couple other designs I really want, and so we'll we'll see. It's gonna it's gonna be a little bit of a process, and they're still having their blast doing it what they want to do with it. So <laughs> I'm not about to go now. You guys are gonna work for me. <laughs> so, well, I'm just, you know, whenever they do it. Are we caught up in chat? I don't Is know. Is that the kind of life we're living right now? Not even a Rico yeah. behind? Yeah. Nobody's got any questions about I mean, I could go back through the secrets. list and actually say hi to everybody, and that will get us 30 minutes. Yeah, that is part of what was keeping <laughs> that's us what it, that is, That's what it is. And I want to say hi to you. But like I read everyone's name who comes topic. in. So thank you all. And I have I do no watch idea what's going it. on. Like, I, don't care. I don't know if Matt really got that box or not. You know? <laughs> he did. I, we read that. But Dr. Anthony, I did ship your box out today. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Joke's on you, by the way. Nate says, I like the idea of the monthly boxes. See? <laughs> Crip said, Rico would be ashamed that you're caught up in chat. Even I was two Ricos behind this morning. <laughs> it's your guys' fault. There's no communication between y'all and us. Also, yeah. not enough bickering between me Ed's, and Shelby. <laughs> Do you want to go? You want to start? <laughs> I was Ed's prepared <laughs> to go tonight. And Etsy is like... Um, my kryptonite. I can't go on there. Like, it, honestly, it just, I like see too many things in like a $40 pot that's like 3D printed that looks like a Pokemon. Just like, <laughs> then I really wanted that I come tell Grant like six times a week. So I just stay off of Etsy altogether. 
<laughs> Otherwise, he would go crazy. Honestly, they have the cutest things. But makes sense. Yes, axolotls do like cold water, if that's what you guys are talking about. Yeah, that's the only reason why the axolotls are still in Jaden's room is because Jaden's room has a window AC unit. So we've got the room cranked down in the 60s for him. Even though it's cold throughout the rest of the house, if it's in the 50s outside, chances are we've got the heat on inside the house just to keep it at that sweet spot at 70. For whatever reason, Shelby is burning up at at 71 degrees and too cold at, at 68 degrees. So we got to keep it <laughs> right in that middle. Um, trying to find it's the, that's not it. It's the aquatic expo. Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to find the link for the aquatic expo. Um, oh, here we wait. go. I, I said got I was going to do that afterwards. I already got it. Okay. Okay. Just a little bit. I'm going to post it down at the bottom. Not the link slow. for the um, North Carolina Expo coming up, which is really close to us. So I see it as a lot more convenient, um, easy. And if Grant doesn't get asked to judge, which I mean, I would love for him to be a judge. But like, I would love to be able to enter my first shrimp show because I got my shrimp and I'm excited. And I got three tanks to choose from. <laughs> so I will be able to compete i might lose but at least i i get to compete for once you know i have never I, been able to because all of the shrimp i had before were just not quality if i had any like tangerine and you can't enter wild shrimp so like tangerine tigers and uh so the last say shrimp were like my shrimp so like those two you cannot enter into a shrimp competition so now i have my own shrimp so i could actually you know maybe take third <laughs> It is um, international show though, so it's really hard. I'm competitive, and I've I've made my stance known that I didn't want to run the show, let alone be a part of the show in any way that would take me out of being able to compete internationally. So, I'm competitive. I want to enter. Uh, some of our shrimp have been behind the ropes now for way too long, and they're gonna go out swinging. So, um, also Shelby's got several groups of shrimp she can enter. So. Uh, if anything, we fly to Cali, we do the show, we bring everything home, drive up to North Carolina, mm. we make we'll both see. shows happen. We'll, see. we'll know more in the next two weeks. Yep. Um, Matt, I will try to get that fish fam link on our website. We are having a little bit of issues on our website that I still got to fix first, and then I'll think about it. I'll do it. <laughs> Zen said, question, do Neos need any special care in a CO2 tank with the pH fluctuations or are they best kept in more stable water? I ask because I don't use RO and it's still 330 TDS still, so no care. So the Neos should be able to handle the pH swing no problem. It's not going to be a nearly as much mm -hmm. issue as it would be for Caradina who need the low pH in order to molt. And then the high pH is going to cause issues with that. And it's not like they can just pick one they want to molt and whatever. So it'll cause issues. Did you mention something about the house being cold and that's why our axolotls are cold? Uh, or were you I just talking about cold? No, I talked about Jaden's room being a seed. So it's oh, yeah. con even if our house is being heated, his room stays the coldest in the house. Just making sure. His room is not actually a room. It was a porch, and then we expanded the, the house around the porch, basically. Carmen says, I keep my house temp around 72 a year. Do I need to have a heater and a Caradina shrimp tank? No, that, no, is, that perfect is temperatures. That is perfect for all shrimp except for the Sulawese and Amazon, the Macubrinkus shrimp. They, they need the heated temperatures. So. Chiller Mentha said, I just set up my first... Eight foot by two foot by seven foot heavy duty rack in my living room to consolidate my tanks. At what point did you, each of you, feel like you, or realize you were committed to fish slash shrimp keeping? So, you can answer that for first. me, I used to do landscaping and I was constantly trying to figure out a way to get my ginger self out of the sun. <laughs> Uh, the manual labor is bad. Being in the sun just drains you. 
And then I had no time for anything else, really. When I came home, no energy to play with the kids or anything like that. So I was constantly like, what can I possibly do to get myself out of here? Uh, we were doing chameleons before I did the landscaping full time. So I knew there was different, uh, I don't know, roadways and stuff that we could go down uh, to accomplish that goal. But taking care of the crickets and worms for two hours a day, I knew it wasn't an option. But I always had this little shrimp sale thing on Craigslist when I was looking to sell any of my reptiles or buy anything. Uh, so we went down that road just for fun so I could have fun with genetics. Um, but when we hit about 40, 45 tanks, I had 55 different types of shrimp at that time. We were keeping neos and tigers in the same tanks together and certain types of shrimp. So um, it, we were doing pretty well on sales. And I was just like, man, if I stop doing the landscaping and focus on this full time, we can make this a full time job. And Shelby decided to take on an extra job and make ends meet. So uh, we were able to do that. But basically, 55 different kinds of shrimp. You got so many different ones breeding. You, you could make a good amount of money off of 55 different types of shrimp. There was a guy with a video out that had seven tanks and says he was making 50 grand a year. So, yeah, it depends on what kind of shrimp you're breeding. Let's take a minute. That is an impressive rack for the living room, though. I have to say, I'm impressed. You, you know, you got an A on your homework here. But anyways, um, mine was a little bit more wishy-washy with the committed. Um, now, I've always liked fish, and I would just keep fish. As far as, like, breeding them and, like, actually wanting to have more and more, it took a little bit longer for me because it was really stressful between the transition. But, like... To see him actually have like his passion, I like obviously you guys can see it, uh, but like you know landscaping, it was like a a day to day like he was just dreading it every single day, and it was like you know nothing got better, and he didn't want to put any more work into it because it's just not something he enjoyed. But like when he started doing the shrimp, it was something like oh this is cool, like this is cool, and like he'd learn a new thing about it, and he'd be so excited to share it, and then he'd tell me about this one and this one and this one, and I'm like, you know, like he actually enjoyed it so much and his passion for it that you know someone's gonna do really well in something if they actually have a passion for it. Like landscaping would have just been working the same job, the you know making around the same pay. Like if you're not gonna have passion towards it, like. Who really does? Like, I no love one making the rich people's that. trees look like like lollipops and stuff like that. <laughs> I can't and there's lollipops. only so many bushes, <laughs> and there's only so many rich people, and the the people that wanted to pay next to nothing for high quality work, it just uh, it wasn't worth it. So. Right. So it's just like you've seen the passion. That's kind of like where I was like, okay, like this is something I really want you to be able to do. So I'll do what I have to do for you to be able to do what you want to do. Um, I wasn't a, like into it, into it with the shrimp. Like I like fish. Like I said, um, the shrimp took me a little bit longer to get used to. Like I had to get those cardinal shrimp and those really caught my eye all the time. And I was like, Oh my gosh, these things are so cute. They look like they're boxed in the little ground and they, I'd sit there and like watch them pick up stuff. So like I got a little bit more interested and then we go to the clubs and then I got more interested when I learned something new and then I'd see a new fish and I'm like, what is that? And like, learn about these and this one. And, um, the people in the hobby are usually really nice. So like, I generally like talking to people about, you know, fish and shrimp and fish tanks and stuff like that. So that got me into the hobby a little bit more was, you know, people watching him and like, Oh, he's so intelligent. Like, this is such a great talk. I enjoy it. And then we got to go places with it. So, you know, it, it takes years for like someone to actually like really be fully committed and put more effort into it. And it was just more of, you know, how much passion he had into it. And I was like, all right, this is, this is pretty cool. We're going to do something with this. But, so. but Shelby's level of commitment for just being on the sideline and not even on the sideline. You know what <laughs> I mean? She had a full-time job and still committed to doing a lot more than what she had to do. So and it, it wasn't even like she's on the sideline to the shrimp keeping. She was 
mainly the only one doing like the peacock cichlids and all this other stuff when we first got into keeping fish in general so yep and some of the water like i did water changes i, I mean as like into it as like i just didn't put my heart into it like he was i was more of like i gotta make sure i'm working this many hours this week and i was working three jobs so like to focus on something and do something like i just had faith that he had a passion enough to do what needed to get done um and then we will get to where we need to get which is exactly what happened and it didn't take long enough like a, i mean some people are working dead-end jobs for you know 20 years without getting promotions so you know we're just thankful so robert downey jr said do you have any orange eye hybrids i've got so many orange eye hybrid tanks shelby's got to get rid of fish because of it you know um i've got I don't know, I'd say 15 probably orange-eyed hybrid tanks. Um, four alone just for crossing orange-eyes with hollow eyes. I've got um, the orange-eyed red lapis, orange-eyed yellow king kong crosses, orange-eyed green tigers, orange-eyed tangerine tiger wannabe tanks, orange, anything pretty much orange-eyed that you would want to be doing. I'm trying to do it. Or I'm trying to get Shelby's fish out of a tank so I can do it. <laughs> Don't touch it. You actually have an empty tank that's been empty for... No, it's not. It's I've just, got it's, empty it's tanks. It's just shrimps I can't find. Sorry. I've got empty there were tanks. A tiger I know tank. I have empty tanks, but it's just not where I want to put them. Matt said, did she just say think about it? Is she normally mouthy? I may want to recite my locker. <laughs> yeah. I am mouthy. I will. I will talk back. Did you expect me not to talk back? I mean, <laughs> she oh. just contains it in the public, and that's that's what <laughs> I, I require. <laughs> the mic gets muted, and she is just <laughs> can't say any of that. It's, just, it's all your fault, basically, is what she's saying. <laughs> oh man, we do Nothing have a new says, plug. I have. It is. It's a brand new plug. So actually, it's a an old plug, but never used in the wrapping and everything. And but a new light. That if one's you garbage. Notice, that way, I'm garbage. even more pale than usual. Uh, <laughs> Shelby got a smaller light, thinking that it wouldn't be as bright as our old green it's light. It's blinding me. Yeah, I really can't. All right. see. I'm kind of used to it now, but I'm no. pretty sure when we walk it's away, so it's gonna be shadows. We're gonna see rings for, in like, our. No, I think it's going to be like the this part where the computer is. Mm -hmm. That's my viewing point to walk around the rest of the house. <laughs> Everything else is just going to be a white blur. <laughs> Gabby Bay says, I have some yellow neos, maybe about 12. When I look in the tank with a flashlight, four of them glow like a neon glow stick. Is that common? The rest still just look yellow. So if you're not having any dead ones, I wouldn't be any worried about it. it it's probably not going to be an issue. Uh, just simply because they are kind of that color that can reflect. It's the the blue velvets and stuff like that. If they're reflecting back, chances are they've got uh, some type of bacterial infection. But um, there's shrimp that have nothing wrong with them that will still kind of reflect like that. So I wouldn't be too worried unless you're having deaths. Uh, Landon is a good substrate so far. I'm not having any issues with it. We've got shrimp on uh, two tanks of land in so far. I know my buddy Eddie is using it as well. Um, and several people were recommending it uh, even before we gave it a tryout. So, DD said, when will Hollow Eyes be on the website? Well, I'm sorry to say, DD, but the Orange Eyed Hybrid crossbreeding tanks kind of got the best of me. And the Orange Eyed Hollow crosses were the the coolest crosses that I had ever done. So I kind of used up the both of the hollow eye tanks to make more of the crosses. And then Shelby's fish got in the way and I couldn't <laughs> separate them. Uh, so I kind of need to free up some tank space and get them in their own tank. But Plenty I think that's what I'm going to do. No. Um, you can test on land and soil. You'll be first on the list, <laughs> Miss Dee Dee. Richard said, Shelby, have you ever tried a Pistogramma triple reds? I got my first trio and looking for advice for food waste in tank. Um, so I have not, but I have had. Um, people assume you, you know, like the Epistos. 
She no. doesn't want the epistos. The epistos I want person. the epistos. But looking for They're advice mine. for food waste in tank, I actually overfeed my fish like crazy. Oh, Honestly, yeah. I am the worst at this. I vacuum um, them. So we got to vacuum it up. constantly. Um, I would feed very small amounts. Small. 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 Biggies. <laughs> So very, very small amount of food. Um, that is like my biggest thing. I always think fish need more than they do, but they really don't eat that much. And I mean, I put small amount, small food. I do small, like crumpled food for all of my fish. Even the, you know, um, angel fish and stuff like they get small. Their mouths are pretty small. So uh, that's the only thing I would say is just very small amounts and, and once a day and plants plants will help with the food waste yep. uh, also you can get some malaysian trumpet snails <laughs> uh and I, I think the pistols will eat them but they could colonize underneath the substrate um chiller methods i feel that grant working a desk job now but trying to get out of the matrix shelby you're a superhero cool to hear grant was so committed that brought into y'all are awesome inspirations. Thank you so much. But Shelby was always in the hobby. And like when I first started dating her, she already had an Oscar tank at the house. Yes. So I knew if I got fish tanks at my house, she'd want to spend <laughs> more time at my house. And I wouldn't have to make the long drive out to her house. So See, I lived in the middle of nowhere. Um, was not taught about fish really. Like I knew like to set up the tanks, but like I would, I just set up tanks. They were uh, atrocious, <laughs> but they worked. I had a great Oscar. My Oscar got so big uh, for a thirty-gallon tank. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed fish. I had them when I was younger. I've been trying to find. My dad's converting all my old like VHF tapes to CDs. So one day I'll be able to show everyone my neon Tetra tank that I got to open up for Christmas one year. Um, it is adorable, and I was super excited. Um, always like fish in tanks, and I think it's really cool. It's just I didn't know how to properly take care of them, so it's not something I wanted to put on my plate most of the time when I already had a lot. I mean, I did a lot in high school. Um, never really had the time, and I've been with Grant since high school, so I've been busy ever since, and then two kids and several jobs, so... It takes a lot to get into hobbies when you really work a lot. So, you know, you got to have someone that supports you in the hobbies that you do. So I understand some people's struggles that like I see a lot of our friends go through um, of them wanting to do something and wanting to commit to it. And I would just say that you need someone to support you. So like, and hopefully you could tell that they really can. They really can. They could really put a stunt in growth. Um, you just need someone that wants to support you. And if they don't have to like it to support you, they really do not. They just need to words of encouragement. Like a lot of men do for women's makeup tutorial videos that they don't care about. Like they just support them and then they do really phenomenal with them. So. I just got lucky and Shelby actually likes all the hobbies that I like. So <laughs> except for golf. Out. It's fine. Oh, I like golf. I just suck at it. And then it's just better for you to, I, I even said that it was so funny because we do everything together. And his friend, Matt was even saying something about it. I was like, look, Grant's going to have one thing that he can do without me that I'm not going. Why are you not bringing me? Like, you know, it's one thing, like, I'm like the only girl at the field at the paintball fields. Like there's some, but they're usually just there to watch their boyfriends. And I'm like the only one out there. And I'm like, you know, he's got to have something. So I'll give him golf. But I, I also, I also okay. suck at golf. No, you're pretty no, good. No. <laughs> Grant and Shelby are planning to attend the Aquatic Expo. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, Matt, for marking that link. I read, I didn't read that before. I put it up. Thought it was a question. <laughs> and then we're also trying to, we're going to try and make the one in Louisiana as well. I just, before we book everything, I got to make sure everything's in we're tip top in, shape. We're up to date on chat. This is insane. Guys aren't an asking like enough questions. Stuff. Maybe. I'm sorry if I am. We're skipping over all the important good stuff. I They're know. like, well, I need this important question asked. <laughs> Hopefully you hit the like button today. <laughs> I forget to mention it every time. Um, but, back to the topic at hand. The only other thing like we got that we didn't talk about is like the turtles. The turtles get fed every day. 
Um, the turtles' lights need to re be replaced every six months because they have UVB light. So the turtles are a little bit of an issue. We were talking about isopods earlier. Shelby doesn't take care of the isopods nearly as much as she should be, but <laughs> that I have they are really resilient little things, and she set the tubs up really well. So if you set up the environment properly for a lot of the terrestrials, uh, they can take quite a uh, abuse with the lack of care. I'll try. Yeah. I'll try. Crip wants me to sing his new parody for <laughs> Puppet Shrimp. Um, oh, <laughs> Jerry likes it when you call him Shrimp, shrimp Papa, <laughs> like Vicky Smalls. I'm sorry. That was terrible. That came out so bad. What? Um, we're gonna have to reword that. I think we could do a good parody with that. If we just need to, it's Papa Shrimp. For, you put it backwards, then Papa Shrimp. It's not gonna rhyme yeah. well or go well with the beat. Jerry likes it when you call him shrimp Papa pop, Shrimp. Pop, but... Oh, I get it. Yeah. Okay. okay. You said it better than me. <laughs> okay. Uh, what show is in Louisiana? No idea. I know that um, is Stephen P or Brooklyn in the chat. Maybe they can. They know. Give me a second. I got this. I got it. It is Aquafest, April fifteenth and sixteenth at the Harbor Center Citadel in Louisiana. So, trying to get some gumbo. You know, trying to trying to have five or six different spots, have it for breakfast, have it lunch, eat some for dinner. You know, I'm about that life. So, yes, hopefully we'll be able to make it to that show as well. Mile High Fish says, question, what temperature will you not ship? I live in Colorado and right now it's in the negative. So if it's on the website, I will still ship there. No problem. Um, the only thing I'd probably check weather on is the Stardust. Uh, I'd probably skip shipping those out to you in the negative temperature. For whatever mm -hmm. reason, during the wintertime, uh, Sulawese, of course, gives us issues. We tried it like a little bit too late into the year last year with the Malala shrimp, waiting for warmer temperatures to offer those back up. But um, all of the other car uh, Caradina and Neocaridina shrimp should be just fine with shipping. Um, the box trucks and the drop-off centers for the mail hubs and stuff like that, uh, they know they're responsible for medicine and live, go live goods and other stuff like that. So they don't, you know, face really extreme temperatures except for when they're dropped off on your front porch. So as long as they don't sit on your porch for an over an hour and realistically – those low temps, you shouldn't be letting them sit outside at all. So as long as you're there for them to be dropped off at home, you can also have them held for pickup at your local post office. And uh, there shouldn't be any issues shipping at any temperature throughout the year. What are you writing down? What Super I need to write down. Mind your business. You are so nosy. <laughs> Who lives with nosy people? Me. <laughs> So we couldn't say it in two seconds. Scubby B said, you think you could bring a few tangerine tigers and a sticker to the next Pasco meeting? Um, I'm going to set an alarm on my phone. That's what I'm going to do. And I wrote it down, so hopefully I will remember. Terrible memory, both of us. Um, the best is the messages like the day before. <laughs> I know this sounds awful. I but got I you should. on the stickers. It might know, take me a meeting or two to remember the tangerine <laughs> tigers on top of it. But I got you. I got you on this. The the Greenwater oh Aquarium God. Society reached out to us and wanted mm -hmm. a donation, but it wasn't until like April or something like that. I'm like, I absolutely will send a box in, but I'm gonna need a reminder closer to the date, please, because <laughs> I will forget. Oh, oh, back to this. So um, I don't know if you mentioned, but because um, I don't listen to you. Um, <laughs> We will hold your package because today, like, what is it today? The last day of the sale? Yeah. So if you wanted to get the sale price, we do hold your package. If you feel 
more comfortable with us holding for warmer um, weather. So we do like, I don't like to ship if it's below 30. Like I do tend to ask if you will wait for them to be shipped. But that's only if you order Caradina usually, or if you have a lot of shrimp on the order. I think I pulled the muscle in my chest. It hurts so bad. <laughs> I can't move. It's because she's just so dusty. <laughs> that hurt my feelings. Aquafest is in LA. I've been meaning to call you guys. So sorry. No, you, you sent us an email. I we just I've got some what? stuff. There's yeah, an email. There's an email. There's, we've got some stuff going on, and I can't make any travel decisions for another Grant, two weeks. Serious question. Favorite ice cream. All right. So peanut butter fudge, hands down. The best but only out made there. by our specific. No, it's Creamery. it's still like if I'm gonna go to Baskin Robbins, it's still my fa favorite flavor at Baskin Robbins. However, if it's the ice cream tub right next to the door where they open the sliding window thing to get the ice cream out, and they knock all the crusted ice on oh, the side of the okay, freezer, stop. I'll get something different. Prep said, "Wait, Grant, are Stardust a Sulawesi?" No, no, Stardust are. Some kind of Caradina shrimp. Are they a pear Caradina shrimp? Are they something else? I don't know exactly, but they are for sure not a Sulawese shrimp. Sulawese all come from the island of Sulawese, and then Stardust are wild type shrimp from Hong Kong. So Geek Boy says, you ever go to any of the Colorado Aquarium Society meetings? I've spoken there once. It's been quite some time. If that is your local club, though. Um, talk to Steven or talk to Tori. If Tori's still the treasurer and you say you want the eaters to come by, I would be more than happy to stay at Tori's log cabin up in the Rockies, save your club some fees on the hotel, <laughs> and drive my happy butt up there because... We love Colorado. Yeah, it is. We enjoyed it so much. The kids keep asking when we're going to go back and mind you the kids were um six and four and had to sit in a car for 27 hours straight we drove straight through no stops i mean besides bathroom breaks and stuff like that but we didn't stop to rest or anything like that drove straight through with both children and they absolutely loved the trip still and imagine going to colorado twice and then telling the kids the next trip oh yeah we're going to chicago <laughs> they got so excited thinking chicago colorado oh, and then the letdown of going to chicago <laughs> they hated no they love chicago they hated i made trip. it up to them I yeah made you it up had to but the first day they were like this is not what we thought it was going to be at <laughs> They love this, this But is not fun. Chicago, they had, we, in one day, I went to over 15 different parks. And one day for them to go play around in different parks. Like, I even went to this weird Amish park. It was so cool. There was horses running around. I, this pulled muscle. It's so bad. I'm going to start You're going to have crying. to get through this stream. I am. I Eight am. Eight more minutes, Shelby. Tough it up. Also, uh, I don't know. Hold Geek Boy, heart. maybe you can. Can't tell. I don't know how close to Aurora you are. Um, is an aqua dog still in business? I think uh, Sh Sheila was going to sell it, but maybe they still have it. If she still owns it, there's a possibility that we could also do another um, skate uh workshop for them as well and make a whole week trip out of going to colorado grant do you prefer ice cream cones or something all right so i just want whatever is going to give me the most quantity of ice cream so some places ice cream cones is the way to go because they stack it high other places sundays they're really good but for the same amount of money you can get a large cup and get more ice cream because you're not getting as much banana and other stuff. So I really just go for whatever's going to give me the most ice cream. I like toppings, but I'm simple. Fudge, whipped cream, nuts. I don't go crazy. Some strawberries sometimes. But on the ice cream cone, we can dip that in chocolate. And I like that too. So give me the most ice cream. Passing wind said, what is a good number to order a to start a colony in a seven gallon, 75 gallon. All right. I recommend one to two shrimp per gallon. 
Now, that's simply a lot to do with having a visual of your shrimp. You can throw in 10 shrimp in that tank and get them to go. Is there fish in that tank? Because if there's fish in that tank, you're going to need to stick to that rule of one to two shrimp per gallon at least. Because they'll hunt them down, they'll track them down, they'll, they'll, they'll end up getting them before they can start a colony and breed out over the fish. However, if it's just a 75-gallon shrimp tank and you want to start with 25 shrimp, you can do that. I started the 275-gallon tubs out there with just 25 shrimp. However, there was months that went by where it was like, are those shrimp even in this tub? I have no idea. I can't, I can't see them. I'd have to pull the filters and scare them out in order to find them. So that one to two gallon rule is really one to two shrimp per gallon rule is really just for people who are like going to be really paranoid with buying five shrimp and throwing them in a 20 gallon tank. And they're never going to see those five shrimp. So they're going to think all the shrimp are dead and they're going to have to buy more shrimp to keep adding in. And when, when really you should have bought 20 shrimp to start out with, you always see shrimp. You'll be able to keep a visual. And if one shrimp dies out of five, you don't know if you have a problem or not, but if three or four shrimp die out of 20, you know that's a good enough percentage of dead shrimp that you've got an issue. Crip asked if we went to Oz Park. No, that is not one of the ones. Now, I did look it up because I did not know that existed. That's pretty cool. Now, we went to, like, there were so many different ones, but they had, it was mainly, like, little kids' parks within a range. Like, uh, so Chicago in itself, when that Schomburg area like has 300 different parks. Um, so some of them I went to like natural trails and stuff like that. And then some of them were just like firehouse, like play things. And it was really cool. And some of them were just Amish uh, butter making yeah, places. That, yeah. So the kids just went to, Oh, you said that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was <laughs> drinking. Aquatic dog is still there. Is it? I wonder. Do you know if it's still owned by Sheila? It, even if it has a different owner, maybe I could get what Sheila was the to name convince of Sheila, them. Was it? I think it was Sheila and Greg. No, no Greg and. She You're thinking. You just know too many Sheilas. Uh, Sheila, Sheila, or Shirley. It would be awesome if we came back to Colorado. We love it there. Absolutely love it. So. Cool. I gotta look it up. I can't I can't remember the other guy that worked there either. It was like Austin or something. I got snail overload. Any recommendations? Feed a zucchini and throw it out. Yeah, or you can reduce the amount of food you're feeding, or you can just accept that snails are going to be in your tank and you're just gonna love them or you. hate them and accept them. But it also feels really good to, you know, off some snails every now and then. Uh, you should see my Shelly's tank, though. It's awesome how many snails are in there. Like, I don't know why I like it, but, like, I feel like I'm starting a collection of how many snails I could put in a tank without it because it, because it becoming an issue. You know what kind of makes me mad about the Shelly's? <laughs> is what? that I don't do anything with the actual, like, live snails. Like, I want them right. to corral Isn't and it herd weird that they the don't snails. eat them to like, use how, the shells? How cool would it be if they had, like, just like, a herd of snails that, like, they just pushed around and moved in there, like, well, I want I want a fish that does something cool like that. <laughs> Is that too much to ask for? Crip says, if I want to be able to have some neo coals survive and breed in my 75 community, how many coals should I order from you? I think I would I would jump back to the question that just came came before. Like, I would probably add seventy five coals into a planted community tank to give them at least seventy five to give them a good shot of, of breeding. Um, problem with coals is coals are going to be heavy heavy on the male, so the females are going to be even more stressed out because of that. It, it's just one of those things where. <laughs> It's risky regardless. You're better off starting them in the tank without the fish so you can get that colony up and going. However, if you're going to do it, do it with as many shrimp as you can and do it at nighttime. If you guys add shrimp to your fish tanks while the lights are on in the middle of the day, they're going to think you're adding in on a new source of live food and they're going to hunt snacks. them down and they're going to eat them mm. as snacks. But if they're sleeping, and the next day they just woke up and they're like, whoa, who are you? 
I had no idea you were here the whole time. My bad, you didn't hurt me. I didn't need to eat you before. I guess you're okay in the tank now. And they're not as aggressive with the, the, the shrimp, where if they come from above and the, you know, the, the almighty who's taking care of their tank and feeding them and stuff like that, they're just going to think that is what it is. Ah. <laughs> Fish Mall says, I worked in Schadenberg in the early 90s. It's probably changed a lot, but um, every, anytime someone like asks or talks about uh, Chicago, like they think about like downtown, I think about Schaumburg. And I think it's just such a beautiful, like it's such a ritzy, nice area that no one like thinks about. It's so nice. It's just like peaceful. It's quiet. Obviously, it'd probably be different if I lived there, but I enjoy visiting it. It sucks that they don't have the Chicago show this year. So I enjoy Chicago. I like the, the Renaissance we go to is really nice. It's really fancy. And if I can get out, I like to get out. I think they do have a really nice swap that I was going to think oh, about going yeah, to once do. this year. So might. we might still go to the Chicago oh, area, but that won't be Schaumburg. Brandon what said, looking, looking into the Alita pumps, are they all diaphragm? Which one do you guys have for one rack? Got my shrimp wall coming along. It depends on how many shrimp tanks is going on that rack. So but if I'm, you're doing a 36, we do the Alita 60 or 80. Wait, what? What was your question? He's asking which pump. I have one for a rack. All right, yeah, it depends how many tanks you have, but like, why, why did you bring up the 60? That's the one we have for the rack. Which rack? That's what I'm asking you. I said the 60 or 80. I said for, for the, which rack <laughs> is what I'm asking you. <laughs> the 36 is like the minimum for me for a rack. So like <laughs> for our our racks, we have. Oh I like the 40, oh. uh, the Alita 40, and I believe they're all diaphragm. Um, they're all linear air piston pumps or diaphragm. I don't I don't know, but I, I think they all have a diaphragm. And uh, they, I don't know, like a general rule of if it's an Alita 40, you should be able to run like 40 to 60 tanks off of it. It depends how low down the filter you put down in the water. The deeper you put it, the more power you're going to need and the more pressure it's going to take off the system. Um, so if you have like a bunch of 10-gallon tanks like these, you can run easily uh, 100 uh, 10 gallon tanks off of an Alita 80. However, uh, if you've got the big 60 gallon tanks or they're deep water and you've got the bigger fil sponge filters are going all the way down to the bottom, uh, you might want to get like an Alita 80 and only run 80 uh, filters off of that. Um, so it's, it's, I'm not, I don't know, a mathematician that went in and nerdy and figured out all the calculations. I kind of just bought a pump that I knew was bigger for me they than what I needed. Diaphragm. And I just no. tried, yep, yeah, all right. Then I just I tried so. to um, max it out. When I maxed it out, I bought a new pump and then moved on to the next system. So they're all based off of about, it's a Alita 40, Alita 60, or Alita 80, and so on. I just use that number about how many sponges I could run off of it. Uh, the Alita 15, We'll run 15 to 20 tanks. However, they're a little bit louder, I think, than the bigger Alitas. So mm -hmm. that's uh, just my I recommendation. I believe they are all diaphragms because you can replace them all. The good thing about the, like, we've just dealt with Alitas, and they have been really good as long as you maintenance and take care of them. So it's not been a problem. Uh, Guppy B said, do Stardust look like wild Nilos? I've never saw them in person. So I actually brought up one of our Instagram photos. That is a buried stardust she gets a lot of coloration they are really pretty um they do look different though there's some that are just blue they have none of the red coloration to them um and get those little faint stripes some of them can be clear a lot look better um when they're buried and like that some of the juveniles some of the males could look kind of clear with faint stripes they could kind of look like a wild neo but you can definitely tell the difference. So that one, it's it's a darker photo, so it's kind of hard to see on here. But that one's a, a male stardust. So it's a little bit darker um, with a clear body. So, but like the whole head was like a darker blue. Um, it's all different, but they're really pretty um, compared to wild neos, which are usually pretty dull in color. And 
they got the cool stripes on them, but like the Stardusts are just a lot cooler. Um, it's hard to see from a distance. You would have to see like taking photos and things like that to really appreciate Stardust. Um, actually, one of my TikToks, if you follow me on my original page, the and our YouTube, I did post a short of, no, it's not Stardust. What was that? Those are cheetahs. Yeah. I don't know the last time I posted a Stardust thing, but yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. We're going to have to get it working on that then. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, do you sell breeder packs when you get a mix of male and females or you just get whatever you order? So for shrimp in general, when we're buying shrimp especially, I never want to buy male, female sex shrimp. Uh, if they're old enough to be sexed, I try to avoid that just simply because the younger ones are going to adapt. They're going to uh, acclimate to your water a lot faster than the adults will. And in the long run, a colony of juveniles is going to produce and outrun and, out, and do a lot better for you than a colony of adults will. So we only sell uh, one cent around one centimeter in size, no, no larger than two centimeters. Um, we don't sex any of the shrimp. It's just simply whatever grade we're catching. The first one that's that size, that the front of the glass, it's in the cup it goes. So we uh, uh, prefer that for ourselves. So that's what we pass on to our customers as well. I'm laughing because Shilla Rush is great. Thanks, Grant. Now it's going to be hard not to get the toy store. <laughs> it's the claw. <laughs> he sure is now. Uh, that's funny. We can also put shrimp genius to me. <laughs> Sometimes when he's talking about genetics, I just kind of blank out, and then I know he's onto something. <laughs> no, Luke, Lucas Bretz is the shrimp Jesus. He's got the hair for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can grow your beard hair maybe long enough to be. Start <laughs> it up here. That'd be funny. All right. We, we caught up in chat, and I think it's a good stopping point. Yeah, I'm beat. I'm tired. It's been a long day of watching you do work. Our energy from up here. <laughs> you actually had to do a lot more shrimp catching today. Yeah, so yeah. It was nice. I had to. I got to watch him run around and catch more shrimp. <laughs> somebody, somebody ordered twenty tibies. I was like, oh, we should take those off the website. And then that same person Ooh. ordered another twenty black tibies before we could take them <laughs> off the website. He got, that's the funny thing. We shipped them, he got them, loved them, and was like, I need more. <laughs> and I, I have them. It's just, I had to go to different tanks and it just takes some time to get them out of the woodwork. So those are hard. And then I did the same thing with the green jades and then two people ordered two different orders of green jades. And then I was like, oh, you know, we're getting down to the last group or two of green emerald coals. And then somebody bought the last two groups of those, and they're all going out the same day. So I'm like, all right, it's going to be some work for today. <laughs> well, I hope everyone has a good night. Thank you, everyone, for watching tonight. We appreciate it. Anything to say? No. Uh, if you guys are not tired of us, go watch the video we just posted of last week if you haven't seen it already. Thanks. And we'll have a video before next week, hopefully. <laughs> Let's hope so. Have Shall a good you night. Better get a dog. <laughs>